Hey guys, it's Hank from Sprues and Brews, and welcome to the official YouTube channel. I'm super excited to finally be making some video content for y'all. Um, you guys have been great over the last couple years on Instagram, um, following along with my builds, offering some really good advice, suggestions, and just having a lot of fun along the way. I figured a good first video for the channel would be a top five list. Um, I was trying to think of some good content options, and I decided that I'm gonna walk you through the top five pieces in my collection, my top five favorite builds. Um, in the last couple years since I started into the hobby again, I've probably knocked out 30 to 40 pieces, which are very quickly taking up my entire house. Um, and I play little favorites and I think I narrowed down to my top five. So we're gonna walk through all those. First things first though, this is Spruce and Brews, so we have to get ourselves a beverage for the occasion. It's kind of a shitty pour. Whoops. Nerves for the first video, right? We'll let that settle a little bit. I'm making myself look bad. Cheers, everybody. All right, coming in at number five on my top five favorite builds list is to me is Panther 5D. It's kit number 35345. It was released in 2015 and it comes with three marking options, all for vehicles on the Eastern Front. So a little history on the vehicle itself. Um, the Panther tank, as many of you know, was designed to replace the Panzer 3 and 4 after um, the German army ran into some serious issues facing Stalin's world beater, the T-34, on the Eastern Front. Engineers back in Germany decided the best way to counter the T-34 was to kind of copy and make their own version. Um, so what they ended up with was the Panther or the Panzerkampfwagen 5. The Panther weighed in at a whopping 45 tons and was armed with a high-velocity 75mm KWK 42 L70 gun. About 6,700 were produced during the course of the war. The D variant was actually the first to roll off production lines, which makes a ton of sense. Um, the A and the G were to follow. Um, and the Germans had some real teething issues with the first D model. Less than 900 units of the D variant were produced between January and September of 43 before it was fixed and they moved to the A model. The defining features of the D model were the drum cupola that you can see here um, in the letterbox machine gun port, which was later replaced by a sort of a bubble cast structure on the A and the G models. So back to the kit itself. Um, I think the reason this snuck into my top five, this was like the first kit that I was super happy with the result. Um, after I got back to the hobby, I did three or four armor pieces and then I picked up this Tamiya kit. It was one of my first Tamiya kits. Um, also one of the first that I used an airbrush to paint which obviously makes a huge difference. Um, and I'm just super happy with it came, how it came out. It's a really user-friendly kit, not a huge part count, and it's a great base for painting and weathering. I included the aftermarket grill set that you can get from Tamiya um, and a couple of Alpine miniature figures. Um, these were some of the first figures I painted, so I'm, I'm still, I don't consider myself much of a figure painter, it's tough. But these guys were a nice challenge. Um, that mid to late war German splinter camouflage is difficult. Um, I'm sure some of the figure painters out there love doing it, but wow, that was a challenge. But I'm happy with how it came out. All in all, I love this kit. I built it in 2017. Um, I competed it that year in the IPMS show where I'm from, and it took home second place in the armor category. So super stoked about that. So yeah, this is the number five kit in my collection. All right, the number four kit in my collection is Academy's 172 B17F. Um, it's their Memphis Bell kit. This is Academy's kit 2118. It was originally released in 2000, um, and it still holds up really well. The B-17 is obviously one of the most iconic aircraft of all time, let alone of World War II. The B-17 was the third most produced bomber of all time behind the B-24 and the JU-88, I believe. It first flew in 1935, and about 13,000 were built. And it was the backbone of the 8th Air Force in Europe. About 3,400 units of the F model were built before they moved on to the later variants, um, including the penultimate G. I've built a few of these kits. This was the most recent one. I did it up as Blonde Bomber from the 91st Bomb Group. I also did Knockout Dropper, which was the first B-17 in the 8th Air Force to complete both 50 and 75 missions, um, and that flew with the 303rd. The reason this made my list is because A, everybody loves a B-17. It's an extremely iconic vehicle, as I mentioned, um, and it's just a blast to build. 
Um, Academy made a super user-friendly kit here. It's a pretty simple interior, not a whole lot going on, but it's a great bed for painting and weathering on the exterior. With this particular version, I really tried to emphasize the panel lines. I pulled out some bare aluminum parts, because why not? Um, and you can kind of do a lot of color variation with the olive drab. Um, you know, allied vehicles all in olive drab get a little boring sometimes, so you gotta get creative here. And I think this kit is an awesome um, test bed to practice those skills. I also picked up some Kits World decals for this, um, decals and stencils to really enhance this one. Fantastic stuff from the folks over at Kits World. They have a lot of multi-packs that come with uh, markings for a few vehicles, so I've got a whole bunch in the stash um, in case I wanna pick one of these up later down the road. So that is the number four pick in my collection. All right, number three in my collection. Um, no surprises here. If you've been following me on Instagram, I'm a big fan of Sherman's. Um, so my number three is Tamiya's M4A3 E8 Easy 8 Sherman. It's Tamiya kit number 35346. It was released in 2015, um, and it's one of the most popular kits out there, I'm pretty sure. Almost everybody's built one of these. If you haven't, pick one up. It's a blast. Sherman's have always been super popular. They got a nice boost um, after the movie Fury came out a few years back, um, starring Mr. Brad Pitt. They're great. It's a beautiful tank, it's a beautiful kit, and it gives you a lot of room to experiment with painting and weathering techniques. So EZ8 actually refers to the suspension system on this vehicle. Um, it was the horizontal volute spring suspension, which was an experimental design to replace the original vertical volute spring suspension that was on the early Shermans. Usually when people think of the EZ8 though, it's this particular version with the upgun 76 millimeter high velocity M1A2 cannon um, and the wet ammo storage system. Interesting enough, only about 650 of these were produced and they only made them from January to the end of the war in 1945. So even though this is one of the most iconic vehicles of World War II, um, they didn't actually make that many easy aids during the war. The reason a lot of them are still kicking around is because they were largely exported after 1945. A ton of these went into use in foreign services, so that's part of the reason that you see them pop up all the time because they were scattered all over the place. So the reason that this made my list is because this was a refurbished project for me. Um, I This was one of the first vehicles that I built when I started the hobby again um, back in 2017. And as you can see, it was okay. Um, I was happy with it at the time, but as my skills progressed, I really wanted to take another crack at it. And I think it's super important as a scale modeler that you can revisit your old stuff. Um, if you made something three, four, five, six years ago, pull it off the shelf and you know give it another crack. Do a little more weathering, repaint it, you know, add some figures, make it, put it in diorama, I don't know. But I think never be afraid to, to retouch something down the road. So when I refurbished this one, I first added some texture. I used Ammo's anti-slip paste and stippled that all over the cast textures of the vehicle. Um, I repainted everything, redecaled it with some leftovers in my box, added these awesome Alpine miniature figures. If you haven't used these guys before, go check them out. They're resin figures. Um, they have a really wide offering and a lot of really good US armored figures. So put four of those guys in there. This thing is loaded up. A lot of extra bits and bobs from my extras box that I put on the back there. Some tarps that I made with tissue paper and PVA glue. Um, and then these applique armor logs that you see on the side, these are actually twigs from my backyard. Put a little acrylic mud on there and lashed them on using some wire that I drilled into the side of the vehicle. I picked this thing up, refurbished it, and now it's one of my favorites of all time. I haven't gotten a chance to compete it yet, but maybe the next show I'll sneak it in there and see how it does. <sighs> all right, we're getting down to it. This is the number two build on my list. Um, and this is to me as BF109 G6 in 148 scale. Long story short, if you haven't built this kit, go pick one up right now. It's awesome. Um, I built two of them. I will definitely build more. It's kit number 61117 and it was released in 2017. So to talk about the kit a little bit, first of all, um, as I mentioned, phenomenal piece. Um, Tamiya did some fantastic engineering with this, somehow even better than their usual stuff. Um, it comes with a really cool magnetic modular system um, for the cowl flaps. So you can display this either open, as I have it now, or in a closed position, and you can swap out the pieces at any time. So it comes with enough decals to do the opened and closed position for any of the vehicles that you choose so you can swap them out. I have aftermarket decals on here, but we'll get into that in a minute. You can do the flaps in the up or down position. It's got a really nice detailed cockpit. All in all, great piece. Um, maybe not a great beginner kit, but once you've got a little experience under your belt, you can do something really special with this one. So a few years ago, I picked up a copy of Adam Makos' novel, A Higher Call. 
Um, if you haven't read it, do yourself a favor, go pick it up, download the audiobook, either way. Um, it tells the story of an encounter between a German fighter pilot and an American B-17 pilot. It's just a phenomenal story all around. Um, but I chose to make a little diorama depicting a scene from the book um, right before that fateful encounter. Um, the German pilot, uh, Mr. Franz Stiegler, lands after attacking B-17s during a raid over Bremen um, to refuel and reload and go back up again and chase down some of the stragglers. Um, there's a painting by a man named John Shaw, um, it's called Pray for Mercy, um, and I kind of drew some inspiration from that to depict this scene. The figures come from two different kits. Um, they're a Kubelwagen crew kit and a resupply um, Kettenkrad kit. I also used some resin diorama pieces, um, some resin accessories from Value Gear. Um, awesome little site over there. Um, go check it out, some fantastic stuff. Everybody should have some in their spare box. There weren't any photographs of this plane, so Adam Makos was super helpful. He actually reached out to me on Instagram and gave me some tips as to the paint scheme and what Franz's plane would have actually looked like on that day. So super helpful, awesome guy. Um, I love all of his stuff. So again, if, if you get a chance, go pick up a copy of the book um, or any of his other ones. Really good reads. I really like making dioramas, it's a blast. Um, I think it really brings your builds to life. Um, you can get creative with the setting there and it, it really helps tell that story. I added a couple aftermarket plaques here um, just with the caption and explaining what, what's going on here with a quote from the book. I love the BF-109. It's one of the most iconic aircraft of all time. Um, when I think of the Luftwaffe, you think of a BF-109, in my opinion. Um, I build a lot of these and uh, you're probably gonna see some on this channel for sure. So that's my number two favorite build in my collection. On to number one. Okay, we finally made it. Last but not least, my number one favorite kit of all time. This is Asuka's Sherman Firefly IC. This is kit number 35028 and it was originally released in 2013. Comes with three marking options, including the Guards Armor Division ones that I used. You already saw one Sherman on this list. Um, again, I really like building them, but this is probably my best. Um, Asuka kits, if you haven't actually made one, awesome. A Little bit more complicated than Tamiya, I'd say complexity level of maybe a dragon kit, a lot of parts, but it comes with a ton of accessories, as you can see, littered all over this kit. Um, I added a few extras from my spare box, and I really wanted to try and recreate a vehicle that would have been used in Operation Goodwood, Operation Market Garden, um, just totally loaded up with supplies and ready to rock and roll. I also tried to capture some of the Hessian tape camouflage that you see on these vehicles. Um, on the barrel here, super simple actually. It's just, to me, a masking tape cut into really fine strips. I laid the strips over the barrel before I painted. It's important to do it before. Um, sprayed the whole thing with the base coat, the olive drab coat that you see here. And then you go back in and you brush paint the individual strips to kind of pull out some color variation. The net is just a 135 scale hobby net that I bought at my local shop. Um, you dip it in a little mixture of water and PVA glue and you can drape it right on the vehicle again before you paint. Um, and it looks pretty good. Kind of pull out the details with some dry brushing of a lighter olive drab color, and it's a pretty good result. I'm happy with it, um, and I'll probably try it again on a vehicle down the road. I added an Alpine Miniatures Commander figure, as you can see in the cupola there, um, and I was trying to recreate a vehicle from the Guards Armor Division, Irish Guards. Think Michael Caine, Bridge Too Far. Um, yeah! So I love this kit. A lot of folks reach out to me um, on Instagram and ask how I achieved some of these techniques. Um, again, super simple. I don't consider myself a pro by any means. It's all about learning as you go here. Um, and the nice thing with that PVA glue water mixture is if you don't like it, you just pop it off, um, kind of clean it up a little bit, and then you do all the painting afterwards. So simple as that. So as most folks know, British and Commonwealth forces were using Lend-Lease Sherman M4s from the States um, during the conflict. And there was pretty much immediately a need to upgun these vehicles. The U.S. went down the route of the high-velocity 76 that you see in the EZ-8, like we talked about before. The British managed to find out how to put something even bigger in there. Um, this is their 17-pounder field gun, modified to fit into the turret of uh, Sherman. There were a couple different models of the Firefly. Um, the IC, as you see here, was built on the Sherman, on the M4 chassis. Um, this is an M4 hybrid, so it has the cast front. The 5C, which you see a lot, it's probably the more common version, um, is an M4A4 with the extended chassis there to fit the Maybach multibank engine. 
with all 30 cylinders pumping away. You can recognize those because they're a longer body, there's more space between the bogies. The IC variants are more of a traditional Sherman build. So yeah, that is my favorite build in my collection. I did get to compete in an online show and it brought home first place, so I was super happy about that. Hoping I can compete it in person one of these days, we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is my, my favorite vehicle in my collection. So that's it, the top five builds in my collection. Um, some of my all time favorites. I was really happy to share these with you today. Um, please comment below what your favorite was or if you've seen any of my other builds and you think one of them should have made the list. Thanks for watching this video. This is my first one on YouTube. Um, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to turn on notifications for the next time I post. All right, so thanks for joining me today. Cheers and take care, until next time.